Hi there, I'm G Charman and welcome to my series of winter warmer recipes. I'm going to be showing you how to cook a delicious one pot chicken and tarragon pot pie. And the best thing about it, there's hardly any washing up. You can find the full list of ingredients for this recipe in the description box. So I've got a pan on a heat and you want this to be quite hot because you want to get a bit of caramelisation on the leeks which you're going to fry first. Caramelisation is not burnt, but it's just a beautiful nutty brown colour that's going to give everything a beautiful flavour. So these are just shredded leeks. Now the best way to cut a leek and to clean it, cut it down the middle, run it under the tap so you can open it up and then cut it into these little half moons as it were. And then you'll get no grit in there. So they can go in. Now everything is done in this pan for this pie. So Everything will be a little cramped, but don't worry too much. So I'm going to add a little bit of salt here, again, to draw out a bit of moisture in the leaves, and this will allow them to soften. Now you want to keep the heat up nice and high so the edges start to caramelise. In this dish, I really like using leeks as an alternative to onion, but if you don't have them, you can use normal white onion, spring onions, red onion, anything goes. The great thing about pies, you can put anything in. So you can just start to see a little bit of colour being taken on by the thinner parts of the leeks, and that's exactly what you want. Leek will burn really quickly, so just be a bit careful. So now that's got a bit of colour, and the great thing is, all this colour around the edge of your pan, created by the sugars and the leeks, exactly what you want, because when you make your sauce in this pan, it'll give it a gorgeous flavour. Now mushrooms can go in. These are just chestnut mushrooms, they're my favourite, but if you have button mushrooms lying around, shiitake, anything you like, just put it in. I've just cut them into quarters. So the idea is, is that the filling is nearly completely cooked on the hob and by the time you lay over the pastry it's just a case of browning that off. So you do want your mushrooms to start to soften. So now the mushrooms have taken up a bit of that oil and become really glossy. I know they're about to start cooking so I can add my chicken. I've just got two free range chicken breasts here, cut up quite small. It's a habit that I've got into for pies, stews. I love meat really chunky, but for pies, because I want this to cook quickly, I've cut it up a little bit smaller. As I said, the pan gets a little bit full, but that's okay, just turn everything over. And the colour in the bottom of the pan here is exactly what you want. So we're going to add a lot of liquid to this to make a really creamy, indulgent sauce. But instead of adding flour at this stage, which I think runs the risk of getting slightly burnt on the bottom of the pan, I'm going to make something called a beurre manier, which is equal parts softened butter and flour. You literally mash these together. And what happens is, when you add this to a liquid, the butter starts to melt, letting the flour incorporate into the sauce and thicken up and it shouldn't give you any lumps if you go by the quantities of one to one. So that's now come together in a bit of a paste and that's perfect for later on. Now all those gorgeous brown bits on the bottom of your pan are flavour and I've got the smallest bottle of wine known to man and I'm going to add a little dash of that into the pan. Now if you don't have the, any wine open don't worry, you can add a little bit of sherry or something like that or maybe even a bit of brandy but if not you can just add your stock straight away. Now the important thing is that you cook off the alcohol so it doesn't taste raw. So you want to bubble this until it's almost completely evaporated. So now that wine has bubbled away and just left the beautiful flavour with none of that acidic wine taste, I'm going to add a little bit of chicken stock. This all depends, there are quantities on the website, but it all depends how creamy and saucy you like your pies. I like a lot of sauce and I don't mind giving a bit of soggy pastry as a sort of payoff. So a little bit of chicken stock goes in, just made from a chicken stock cube or fresh stock would be great, but don't panic. Now as you can see the beurre manier is going to come in really handy because this is so liquidy. Now I like my pies creamy, this is creme fraiche. I guess it's my slight nod to being healthy. You can use half fat creme fraiche, you can use cream, whichever you like, but I always have creme fraiche in my fridge. I just love the slightly acidic taste of it. So that goes in too. 
And then because I've used a chicken stock cube, there's quite a lot of salt in there anyway, but I will taste it a bit later. But it does need a good grinding of black pepper. The chicken is almost cooked, so when this goes into the oven, it's not going to take very long. Now, as you can see, really soupy and saucy. And I can just add a bit of this paste into the middle. And then as it comes up to the boil, the butter will melt and it will just naturally thicken everything. You can already start to see the texture of this liquid changing and it's becoming really creamy. So I think that's just about right for me. It's a good sprinkling of tarragon. No need to transfer it to a pie dish. This is a one pot wonder. So this comes off the heat and that's stage one complete. So normally with pies, you line the bottom of a dish with puff pastry, put your filling in and line the top. For me, A, it's a little bit more effort as it's one more thing to wash up and B, it means you get a lot of pastry and the filling for me is the best bit. So I'm gonna use phyllo pastry. Now it's a lot lighter, a lot healthier until I attack it in a minute, but I'll show you why. And this is the perfect way to make a pie in one pot and really, really quickly. So I've got a little bit of melted butter. Now the idea with this pie, we're not looking for perfect precision or anything like this. This is rough and ready pie making. So phyllo pastry, I'm just gonna brush with a little bit of butter. And this way you lose a slight element of health, but hey ho. And then into the frying pan that you've cooked your filling, I'm just going to take the buttered sheet and seriously anyone could do this even if you're not a cook you scrunch it over the top you want all these ribbons and peaks because they're the bits that get really brown and really crispy and I think just two more sheets will cover that again you don't have to cover every corner of the pastry with butter it's just to help give it a bit of flavor and a bit of colour when cooking. And it is as simple as that. Now, just for a little bit of chefy touch, you can either grate a bit of parmesan over, put a few thyme leaves or whatever. I'm just going to put a little bit of black pepper on top of the pastry. And then this goes straight into an oven, about 190 degrees for a fan oven just until the pastry is golden brown. You don't have to worry about the filling because it's already cooked. For more of my winter warmer recipes and others, click on the subscribe button. So my pie has been in the oven for about 10-15 minutes. The pastry is beautifully golden brown and crispy and the sauce has bubbled up round the edge. It really is a delicious one pot chicken and tarragon pot pie. And I really hope you can join me for the next recipe in my series of delicious winter warmers.